Greetings, Internet. This is Ardwick, and today we are going to be delving into some Kerbal Space Program. This is sort of like a Let's Play. In a way, a little bit like Minecraft, how I'll be doing this. I'll keep playing it until I more or less run out of things to do. Just a brief little thing before I start, by the way. Uh, this series isn't quite meant to be a tutorial. This is more or less my foray into the game. Um, I've actually been following a couple of tutorials to go through this. Uh, Scott Manley on YouTube is pretty good at this game, actually. I'm doing a lot of things that he did, and as I learn the game a bit more, I'll be branching off into my own designs. Um, so, that's about it. Uh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hardwick of Annette reporting to you from the Final Frontier. This is Kerbal Space Program. This is a space program simulator that'll allow us to explore our planet, go into orbit, go to the moon, go to the other moon, explore a fictional solar system, and traverse beyond our wildest imaginations to the deep reaches of space. Um, this is a game that is available on Steam, but it's currently in its alpha version at the moment. Um, and... It's a bit complicated, admittedly. Um, it can be a little bit intimidating because a lot of its mechanics do involve real-world physics. And you might be like, Oh no, I'm gonna have to do a lot of math and there's a lot of work involved. Well, sort of. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Plus, it's rocket science! You get to pretend to be a rocket scientist. Yes. So let us get started. Um... There are two modes that are readily available for us to play. I'm going to start a new game. Those two modes are Sandbox and Career. Sandbox, if you're a really skilled player, it'll give you everything that you want and you can just play with any old rockets. Or if you don't have any experience but you just want to blow rockets up and kill all of your astronauts, Sandbox is the way to go. Career mode is the mode that I will be playing. It involves getting pieces one step at a time, and using a technology tree to eventually get you to the stars. I feel that that's a bit more appropriate since it sort of gives you the ability to learn what you're doing as you gain those technologies versus sandbox, which will give you a lot more than you really qualify to understand. So I'm going to go with career mode first. We are going to call ourselves Captain Ardwick. And we are going to be nerds and use one of my favorite logos of all time, the NASA logo. Hopefully we won't get in trouble for that. Uh, we're going to overwrite that because I was testing the game earlier. Um, right, so starting the game, we have a few facilities that are readily available to us. Um, we have the... oops. We have the launch pad, which will uh, let us see anything that we're about to launch. We have nothing to launch yet, therefore we have no reason to go there. Going clockwise, we have the tracking station, which lets us see any missions that we currently have going on, or it lets us look at the solar system. Let's take a little bit of a brief peek and see what's in store. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where all of our missions begin. This is the planet Kerbin. It is similar to Earth, it's got water on it, and it's got continents and lands of green, polar ice caps, deserts. Um, this is where we are and where we are going to launch from and explore our solar system. Um, if we zoom out, we can see that, like the Earth, it does have a moon called MUN Mun. But, what's this up here? If we zoom out yet a little bit further, using our scroll wheel, we can see that this planet has not one, but two moons! A bit different than our own. Zooming further out still, we see some unidentified objects within the solar system, and we get to see the solar system itself. This is a fictional solar system, it is not our own, but there are some parallels to the uh, planets that are in our solar system. For example, like our own planet, we are the third from the sun, Eve and Moho are a bit further in, and further out we have planets that are like Mars, Duna, Dres, which is sort of like a planet, but actually a dwarf planet, you may have heard of that term before, Jewel, the Jupiter of this uh, solar system, and a little bit further out we go all the way to the Pluto of the solar system. Sadly, there is no Saturn analog yet. However, before we can visit any of those places, we must first begin from the ground up, literally. Yes. 
Now, we don't really know anything about rocket science yet, because we just started. That's what our research and development center is for. This is where our technology tree is. We can spend science, which we gain from missions, to advance in our science and launch to further places. We have no science yet, because we have achieved nothing so far. So, we are at bare bones rocketry. Over here is our astronaut uh, hiring location, where we can hire astronauts and put them into our mission list here. We have many astronauts, because unfortunately, astronauts tend to die in space missions. Um, hopefully we will do this with as minimal casualty as pos casualties as possible. I cannot promise anything, however. Uh, finally, over here we have our space hangar, I mean, our sorry, our plane hangar, where we can build planes. But we are a space program, so for now we will focus on rocketry. Now, in the real world, rocketry began with a series of rockets that just went up and down, and we're going to do similar things. No orbits, no nothing too fancy, we are just going to do straight up rocketry. Uh, in keeping in uh, mind with the real world, some of the first rockets that were really tested and proved and helped pave way for the current NASA missions were created by Robert Goddard in the 1920s. Um, his rockets more or less went up and down, and after a few explosions, they were able to go far up into the air and be uh, testable, provable, and reliable rockets. In his honor, we name our first rockets after him, the Goddard rocket, or we're going to call it the, the Goddard 1. Now, to make a rocket go up and down, we don't really need too many pieces. Uh, for example, we have one piece over here called the Command Pod. Uh, we only have one Command Pod uh, available to us right now. Um, this pod allows us to put astronauts in it so that they can go up into space and do science. So we're going to put a pod right here. I'm going to raise it a little bit up so we have room to build it underneath it. Uh, propulsion is our next step. This is what gets us anywhere. We have three options available to us. We have a liquid fuel engine, we have a solid fuel booster, and we have a fuel tank. We have two options. We can either use a fuel tank and a liquid fuel engine to launch up into space, or to make things a little bit less complicated, we can use a solid fuel booster. That'll get us about as far as we need to go to conduct the science that we want to do in our mission. There isn't too much science involved yet, so we don't need to go too far. Um, last but not least, we do need something else here, because if we were to try to launch this rocket now, our poor astronaut would die a horrible death, and more importantly, no science would be transmitted back to Earth, or Kerbin in this case, so we would have no purpose for doing any of this, aside from killing an astronaut. Um, we don't have too many other pieces that are accessible to us yet, as you can see. However, one a very important thing that you want to attach to any rocket that intends to return to the planet is a parachute, or some way to catch yourself so that you do not die a horrible death. So we've got a parachute, a command module, and a booster. So physically our rocket's ready to go. But there is one more thing we need to do. Uh, rockets launch in what are called stages. Um, Right now, this is a single-stage rocket, which means that everything that we do would happen at once. Each stage counts as a single action. Um, and unfortunately, the problem with that is that we currently have a booster and a parachute attached to the same stage at once. If we try to do both at the same time, we would die a horrible death. Which is bad, as you may be able to tell. So, we want to control where our stages go. Down here, on the bottom right corner of our screen, is where our stage console is. You'll notice that we only have one stage, and two parts for the stage. We want to add one more stage. And we want to drag our booster down to that stage. So now we have one stage for the booster, and one stage for the parachute. Um, it launches from, the d uh, from down up, so the, the stage one right here would launch first, and then the parachute would deploy second. Both deploy one at a time when I hit the space bar on my computer. So, with that being said, we are good to go. We are going to save our Goddard 1 rocket and begin our mission. Now we're about ready to go. We are on the launch pad. We are joined by our commander, Jebediah Kerman. 
Uh, let's see. So we should be all set to go. Um, just a brief thing before we go. This right here is our control. It's our steering. Above it is the surface. Um, uh, where it says surface, that's our miles per. I mean, sorry, meters per second. Uh, we are all set to go. Otherwise, uh, you'll everything else will become apparent as we go along. So, preparing to launch in three, two, one, ignition and liftoff. We are on our way to the sky. Uh, I can let go of the space bar now. The rocket's going to burn out on its own. The uh, fuel uh, gauge down here in the bottom left corner shows us how much fuel we have left. Uh, we can control where we're going with the WASD keys. Um, don't worry about going too far yet. I'm just doing this as a sort of way to get us further away from our launch pad. So fortunately, this should put us a little bit further than we need to be, but that's okay. So we're going to go a little bit away from our launch pad. Um, let's see, if we press the T button, that's our stabilizer. That'll lock us into the current orientation that we have now. So I'm no longer whipping around wildly. Um, our altimeter on the top of the screen is still going up, which means that our momentum is keeping us uh, going upwards. But that's not going to last for too long. So while we're up here, we want to conduct some science. If we right-click on the command pod where uh, Jebediah is currently sitting, we can do a crew report, which is stage one of our, not stage one, I should say, but our first part of our science. If we click that little blue bar right there, he can see his house from here. And that actually conducts a little bit of science. It gives us 3.5. So we're going to keep that data. We could also transmit it as well for scientific value. And transmissions are okay if you want to preserve your data in case you die, but we're going to keep the data for now. Uh, so now you may have noticed that we are actually falling. Uh, we are slowly falling back towards the ground. I'm going to orient our rocket. We don't have to do this, but I like to orient it so that it's aimed straight down. And if we press the space bar, our second stage will kick in and drop off our uh, parachute. That will allow us to safely land back on the ground, which I am now going to deploy. There. Having done that, we should now have a safe trajectory back down to the ground. Um... So it's more or less a straight shot from here. Let's see if there's anything else we can do here. If we try to do another crew report, it'll say that we already have one. We can override it, but there really, really wouldn't be any point to it right now. From here on on, we're going straight to the ground. We're a little bit further away from where we launched our command uh, area over there. Looks like we're going to uh, land in the grasslands area, and that's okay. Um... You may notice that we're still falling pretty quickly, about a hundred or so meters per second, but we're decelerating. Once we get close enough to a ground, our parachute will deploy properly, and we will have a fully safe uh, uh, landing. I'm just going to keep an eye on it like this, so you can see exactly how it looks. Any second now, that should kick in. There we go. Um, so now we're doing a mere eight meters per second, and that's a safe enough uh, speed to fall down to. You may notice that these speeds are a little bit slow. Uh, well, up in the upper left corner, we have the warp um, command right here. These arrows, there are four of them. If we click on them, they will let us go a little bit faster, two times speed, three times speed. Uh, I'm going to set it to one time speed for now, because although we can make it go faster, the thing is, is that if we go too fast when we're landing, we have a higher risk of destroying ourselves. So when we get close enough to landing, I'm just going to set it up one speed and let it just fall on its own. Nearly there, about to touch down on the surface. And here we go. And that explosion means that we have succeeded. That does sound a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, we have successfully landed. Uh, Jebediah is still alive, and more importantly, we have our science. Okay, that's mean to say. Jebediah is an important member of our team. Um, you may think that our mission is over, because we can no longer launch or do anything, but there is still some science to conduct here. Uh, if we click on Jebediah himself, we have a couple of options that are available right here. Um, IVA, which lets us see inside of the command module, and EVA, which lets us leave our command module. EVA stands for Extravehicular Activity. You don't have to remember that, but EVA basically means that you can get out of your craft. So we're going to click on that. He now, the game treats him as though he's actually flying because he's not touching the ground, but in fact holding on to the ladder here. If we click him, we can get an EVA report, which will give us a little bit more science. 
a most precarious situation, he says. By the way, above this window right here, there's another screen that says EVA report while flying over Kerbin grasslands. That means that we are in a new area. Um, the planet has biomes in it. Grasslands is one of them. Our space center is one of them as well, and so is the ocean and so on. For all of our science experiments that we conduct in those areas, we can get more science. We can also transmit our science, like we could before, in case we die. But we're going to keep our science, just to keep things neat and tidy. If we right-click again our, on our uh, command pod, we can store our experiments on board the command pod itself. And that means that all of our data is currently on the pod. Um, we can now dismount our command pod as well by pressing the space key. We are now on the surface of our own planet. Do you have anything to say? He doesn't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to be here, and he is totally right. Um, but, this is an experiment. We're doing science, and any result is a result that is viable of scientific endeavors. Uh, we can do a couple more things, too, including take a surface sample, which is, collect some, which is to collect some dirt. That might not seem like a big deal, but that actually gives us nine science. Sample return missions are very vital to a lot of space um, traveling. So we're going to keep the data, of course. We can also plant a flag to mark our occasion. Um, this, I believe, is ceremonial. I don't think there's any specific purpose for this, but it's kind of neat to have one. Uh, we can name it, in fact. We're going to call this the Ardwick Landing... Well, no, that's a bit, um... A bit self-oriented. We're going to call this Goddard One Landing. Plaque text. We did not die. Uh, is there anything else we have to do here? Well, we're finished with our EVA, at least, so we can board back... Or actually, before we do, we are going to store our experiments aboard here. We don't need to, because we're going to rejoin our uh, place in a moment, but it keeps things neat and tidy, and I like tidiness. Uh, we're going to board our craft. Be sure to board your craft before ending your mission. We're going to get back inside. Uh, I think there's one more thing we can do, actually. I'm not sure if we can do this, but I, we should be able to do one more crew report. Uh, no, we can't. All right, so that actually, in fact, ends our mission. We can officially end our mission by going to the top of the screen where our altimeter is and click Recover Vessel. And with that, our first mission is complete. All of that, even though we didn't go too far, we have, in fact, obtained 25 science, which is not bad to start off with. Each one of these missions that we see here on the screen gave us a certain amount of science, and we can, in fact, use that science at the Research and Development Center to advance further in the technology tree. We only have one option right now, called the Basic Rocketry, which we want. Basic Rocketry gives us some basic parts that allow us to go even further into the atmosphere, which puts us one step closer into being in proper space. We get a new fuel tank, which lets us go even further. Another one, which is smaller but more efficient. We have a Mystery Goo science experiment, which allows us to conduct more science while we're up in space, and advance us further in the technology tree a bit more. And, finally, we have the very important, uh, I'm sorry, important stack decoupler, which allows us to create rockets that can break apart on purpose. You'll see why that's important later if you don't quite understand what that means on a scientific level or in a rocket tree sense. Uh, we can actually go a little bit further in the technology tree here, actually. We can choose to either do some more rockets and give us an even more powerful machine. We can use stability to have more control over our current machine. Or we can use survivability right here, which allows us to survive more of our missions and therefore conduct more science. Survivability is important, and we want to make sure that we survive so that we can do science in the first place. And it is also the least expensive in research. We can get any one of these with our science total right now, but the most practical that we can do right now, I believe, is survivability, which is what I'm going to select. We only have five science left, and unfortunately that is not enough to get us any further. But already we have made great strides towards our next missions. So stay tuned, everyone. This is Ardwick of Annette. Until next time, uh, stay tuned and good night.